On April 13th, 2029, the asteroid 99942 Apophis will pass within 20,000 miles of Earth, closer than the moon and geosynchronous satellites. An event like this only occurs once every 80,000 years, making the Apophis approach unprecedented in all of recorded history. It will easily be visible without a telescope across Europe, Asia, and Africa. I'll say right away that Apophis has absolutely no chance of hitting Earth. We've refined its orbit to such an extent that it's not even on the list of potentially hazardous asteroids anymore. There's absolutely nothing to worry about in 2029, 2036, or any other years Apophis will pass anywhere near Earth. So, with that out of the way, let's focus on the incredible opportunity Apophis gives us. There's already plenty of missions planned to visit Apophis in the next decade. The Osiris Apex mission is already on its way, with two European missions to the asteroid in various stages of planning. These missions are great, but they're uncrewed. There aren't any humans on any of them. I want to make the argument that, during the 2029 approach of Apophis, we should send a crew of humans to it. Apophis is a golden opportunity for further human exploration into the solar system beyond the moon. Before we get into the concepts for crewed missions, I should probably mention that we're basically already out of time. It'd take a miracle to get a crew and a ship ready in five years to visit Apophis. But, as of the time of making this video, if we make it our absolute top priority, it's possible we could make it. Of course, that involves further delaying the Artemis program, which we absolutely shouldn't do. But Artemis has two major goals, build a moon base and prepare to send humans to Mars. Sending humans to Apophis will be one of the necessary steps in eventually getting humans to Mars. Mars is, unsurprisingly, very far away from Earth. It's a distance measured in hundreds of millions of miles, not hundreds of thousands for the moon. We aren't getting humans to Mars on our first try, we need intermediate steps. Asteroids are perfect for this, for reasons I'll get to later. And Apophis is the best of all the asteroids in the solar system for sending humans to. If we want to send humans to Apophis, we can't do it when it's directly at its closest approach. This is because of how fast Apophis will be moving. It'll be much faster than anything in similarly high Earth orbits, meaning it'll be a rendezvous target unlike anything we've ever attempted to get to before. The crew would only be at the asteroid for a few seconds if the rendezvous occurred during the closest approach of the asteroid. Apophis will only be below 40,000 kilometers of altitude from Earth for about two hours, and so that doesn't leave enough time to launch a mission, rendezvous with the asteroid, and return. The best way to do this is chase after the asteroid after it leaves Earth, staying there for multiple weeks. This is actually a perfect amount of time. It's longer than the Apollo missions, and it will take humans much further away from Earth than the Moon is. But it's much shorter than a crewed mission to Mars, so it's a perfect testing ground for how humans perform in deep space for extended periods of time. Because we can't possibly expect to send humans to Mars on our first try leaving cislunar space. We need to send humans to closer objects first, and the near-Earth asteroids are perfect for this. Apophis is a godsend for exactly a mission like this. Even if we can't send humans to Apophis because we've run out of time, we still need to send humans to near-Earth asteroids. But using Apophis will kill two birds with one stone. We'll learn how to survive in deep space, necessary for travel to Mars, and we'll learn how to send larger ships to asteroids, perfect for asteroid mining missions. Because we would need a big ship. You wouldn't want to stick a crew in an Orion capsule for weeks on end. This is yet another reason Apophis is perfect. It will allow us to test ship concepts for deep space crewed missions, as well as how humans perform. Apophis gets a bad reputation because, despite it not being on the hazardous asteroids list, people are still scared of it hitting Earth. It won't. We need to get past the intimidation and realize what a golden opportunity this is. Not just to study this place, but prepare for missions beyond the moon. But a mission like this seems incredibly unlikely right now. Unless some billionaire magically funds a mission like this, a crewed mission to Apophis most likely won't happen. Which is why I'm trying to raise awareness about this. We're almost out of time, so every person who knows that this is even an option will help. So, how might we go about doing this? Assuming a perfect world free of budgets and delays in politics, how would we send a crew of humans to Apophis? Well, if we're just sending an orbiting mission, then we wouldn't need much. Just a powerful rocket, probably something like a starship. Or we could use a smaller capsule, just one modified for deep space. We would probably launch right after Apophis, chase it down, make a few orbits around it, then return. This will be a monumental achievement for humanity. The furthest humans away from Earth, the first humans to visit an asteroid, the first humans to leave Earth's sphere of influence, etc. But that's boring. Let's land on Apophis instead. An orbiting mission would be great, but landing on Apophis would be something else entirely. This, of course, is a lot more complicated. Before I get into how we would go about landing humans on Apophis, there are some dangers we need to be aware of. When Apophis passes by Earth, Earth's gravity will bend and distort the asteroid. This will likely send a shower of debris trailing behind it, which will pose a danger to any ship trying to approach. 
This could at best be a thin stream of dust, and at worst an onslaught of boulders that would destroy anything we try to send to it. Any ship we send would have to be protected against this, which would add extra weight, making it more difficult to launch. Luckily, this debris should thin out once Apophis gets further away from Earth, but every second we let Apophis get further away, the less time we have to launch, and the higher chance we have of losing Apophis forever. But let's assume we solve this. Maybe we get lucky and the debris tail isn't too bad, and our ship is adequately protected. Luckily for us, there's a whole plan that already exists for landing humans on Apophis. As far as I can tell, this isn't an official mission concept, but it seems possible that we could do it. At the very least, the groundwork is already in place. I'll link the paper in the description, and it's what I'll be using to explain what I think is our best option for landing humans on Apophis. If we want to do anything of importance once we send humans to Apophis, then we'll need an uncrewed mission first. This will not only deliver valuable scientific equipment to the asteroid, but also test whatever rocket we choose to use for the landing to make sure it's actually safe. This mission has to be launched no later than May 2028 if we want it to be there in time for human arrival. So, four years. Nowhere near enough time to put together a mission like this. But this isn't completely mission critical, it's just a bonus we'd really like to have. And this assumes a perfect world, so let's continue. The crew itself will only have to spend a few weeks in deep space. This is longer than the Apollo moon missions, but far less than what it'll take to get to Mars or other near-Earth asteroids. If all goes well, the uncrewed landing will land in February 2029. The uncrewed mission has to go flawlessly, because humans will be arriving a few weeks later. The crewed landing will follow, and these people will become the first humans to land on an asteroid. The crew will spend less than a day on the surface, so we'll have to act fast. Apophis has negligible gravity, meaning the astronauts will have a very hard time actually standing, as any minor jump would send them flying off into space. Luckily, this can be fixed with a tether and isn't really an issue. The exact science experiments they'll do up there I can't predict, but a major benefit of this is that Apophis will be close enough to Earth to have live video. So, people will be able to watch the Apophis landing just like people watch the moon landings. That's a major bonus that isn't present for all near-Earth asteroids. But after a few hours, the crew will have to leave. They'll spend a few weeks returning back to Earth, where they'll be remembered for all of history as the first people on an asteroid. Unfortunately, we're pretty much out of time to make a mission like this. It would take a miracle to pull this off when we only have five years before Apophis' arrival. But even if we can't make it to Apophis, the main problem trying to bring awareness to is the fact that we need to send humans to a near-Earth asteroid, and soon. We aren't getting to Mars on our first shot, we need a middle ground first. Apophis would have been perfect, but we've already missed our shot. So, let's not miss another one. There are already a few tentative plans to send humans to some other near-Earth asteroids, but nothing confirmed yet. Hopefully we do something like this soon. Because if we ever want to venture out beyond the moon on our way to Mars, the near Earth asteroids will be our next step. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space colonization.